How's it going everybody? My name is Jake Thomas. And I'm Colin Thomas. And tonight we're drinking Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA. Tell me a little bit about this beer real quick. Well this one, Jake, is a, a fan pick. So for those that are new to the show, we like to open our show with a different beer every week. Mm -hmm. um, one of our fans told us about Voodoo Ranger and told us we need to give it a shot. Uh, typically we would be drinking a Northwest Ale or mm -hmm. some sort of an IPA craft beer from the Pacific Northwest. But this time we're drinking a beer from North Carolina. It has 7.5% alcohol by volume. I've never tried it before, so let's go ahead and crack these things open. Let's check this out. Ooh, there we go. It didn't explode everywhere. Ooh, right. Paige Van Zant's running out right now. All right, before we get to the fight with uh, Paige Van Zant, let's talk about the prelims. So in the first fight, uh, who did you end up picking? So as you probably saw if you guys watched some of our uh, pick'em videos, I had uh, Martin Day winning this fight hit by decision. Mm -hmm. I had I had Grant winning by a submission in round two. He ended up actually knocking him out in round three. Yeah, it was a really close fight. I think uh, going into round three it was probably one to one. Um, round three, Day looked like he was just continuing or what he did in round two, and he was picking yep. him apart, and then. All of a sudden, he wasn't. <laughs> I mean, Grant just landed a beautiful, what was that, a left hand that just came right it over the top. It was just over the top and knocked and him out. And just knocked him out. Paige Van Zant getting in the cage right now. In her corner, she's got Rick, Ricky Simone, Austin Vanderfort, her husband, and uh, she has Fabiano Scherner, all three yep. of them there in her corner. Yeah, awesome. so that put me at 0-1 and you're 1-0? Yep, that put me at 1-0. No perfects yet. All right, let's move uh, on to the next fight. We've got, uh, what is it? Carajosa, she uh, beat Vanessa Mello. Yeah, she uh, beat Vanessa Mello. It went pretty much exactly how I thought it would go. Uh, Carajosa was just a lot better, and she won a decision. That was uh, the first perfect pick of the night for me. Yeah, I, I figured uh, you know, I'd see a little bit more from Vanessa Mello. She did come in five pounds overweight, I think. Um, I thought we'd see a little bit more from her coming out because she is on two losses so this is now her third loss in a row and she missed weight so she also missed weight and she just is a very very slow starter she really didn't get anything turned on until the third round and by the third round she actually started to look good she was landing some shots and she was getting in there pushing the pace just was too little too late yeah you know what uh unfortunately i feel like she's probably gonna get cut at this moment yeah i think she's definitely uh on her way up oh and three plus you miss weight you know, I, I get that you're doing this whole special Fight Island thing, but with with those things given there, she, it, it's time to bring in somebody new and send her on her way. We got we to gotta remember, too, these fights were at 2.33 in the morning, uh, their time. But that's no excuse. You're a professional. Everybody else on the card's making weight, except I think there's a couple that miss weight. Well, it's got to be hard, though, but, because but you, you don't, you don't want to adjust to their time. Right. Because you're not fighting at what, what would be a good time for them. Yeah. Right? I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. I'm never there. So yeah, you got to <laughs> sleep during the day and you get yeah. up during the night like you're working a graveyard yeah. shift. But Yeah, so it's got to be hard. All yeah. right, so let's move on to the next one. This one, Halion Paiva versus Zagov Zumagalov. Fun fight. We said yep. it was going to be. Yeah, it was a great fight. Great I really fight. enjoyed it. Um, it pretty much went the way I thought it would. It was It was actually a really close it was, fight. It was closer than the, the decision would let you think. Yeah. Um, it was It was a fun fight overall. Um Paiva was just a little bit ahead, and he was able to land some good was, strikes. Yeah, it was back and forth. I think uh, it was really weird. Uh, Zalgas, he uh, was just a little slow in the first round. It took him a while to get uh, acclimated, I think. Yeah. Shake off get those UFC jitters and stuff like that. So he was a little slow. But he did outstrike Paiva in all three rounds in terms of significant strikes. Yeah. He also landed all the takedowns. That is um, true. So it, it was really close. The decision I don't agree with, but it, it could have gone either way. I mean, it I, was that I, close. It wasn't. I agreed with it. You text me saying one and one. I said I don't know. It might be two and zero oh at this point. Right. Like I said, it was close. So it, it was close. It was. It was close. It's not something you could say it was a robbery. Mm -hmm. I just think that you know how how are you going to lead in significant strikes in every single round and get the takedowns and still lose the fight. It's one of those things. You know, it depends on what the judges see. So well, what is a significant strike? You know, that's the biggest problem. What is a significant strike? We've Depends. talked about that a lot. So, all right, so let's move they on to the next one. Do, uh, they don't get a score pad right next to them that shows how many significant strikes they're landing. Yeah, but that's because that can, sway, then, your, that exactly. can sway your decision. All right, so the next one is uh, Marcin Tibera versus Maxim Grishin. Um, I picked Maxim Grishin to knock him out in round two. 
Um, I thought that he would be able to keep the distance and find find those strikes and, and land them. Yeah. Not what happened. No, you know what? I, I was excited this one went exactly how I said it was going to go. Yeah. I, I told you guys... Because uh, I was on two perfects in a row. Yeah. So I, I told you guys, you know, uh, Ty Brewer is just going to try to grind him out. And that's Same exactly thing what we did. saw him do with uh, the other big strikers that he fought. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's exactly what he did. He just pushed him against the cage, ground him down. I think he didn't land his actual first takedown officially until what was it, the end of the second or the third round? No, no, it was till um, I think it was a, it was right at the very end of the, the second. second round, right? Yeah, and then in the third round the he was one. able to take him down again. But <laughs> I disagree with Michael Bisbing in that fight. Michael Bisbing was saying that uh, Tibera was having a hard time taking him down. I don't think that Tibera was really trying to take him down. I think that what was going on was uh, Tabura was just making him feel the weight and feel the pressure. Yeah, he's a much just bigger, heavier guy, too. Yeah, and, and that's what it looked like to me. It mm -hmm. looked like to me he was just trying to make him carry him so that way he would he would wear him out. Yeah. So I, I disagree with Michael Bisbing in that aspect. Um, but good win. Yeah, after going 0-3 to start the night, I finally got on the board with the perfect, with the perfect pick there. With so. the perfect pick. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, so we went on to the next one. This one was Leonardo Santos versus Roman Bogatov. Um, this was a good fight. This was this was a fight where the second round, I was screaming for them to stop the fight. I felt like Bogatov was out. Um, yeah. it, it was a 10-8 round for sure. Um, he was he was he was out. He was out on his feet, and he was not. He had no clue what what, he, what was going on. The ref should have stopped the fight. I still think he should have, even though Bogatov was still able to come back and fight back from it he took way too much unnecessary damage i feel like and they should have stopped it um but leonardo santos i had him winning a submission in round one he ended up winning by decision what do you think yeah i had uh santos by submission in round one as well um this fight i didn't get a watch because i was on my way over on to your way house over at the time yeah. so uh i did catch that third round though man and that was wild because every time i was as soon as i got here santos was on a knee like taking a time out like what yeah. the hell is going on yeah, he got hit in the nuts faked it a um, little bit um he got he definitely got hit with that illegal knee yeah there was one where he got kicked it looked like in the actual gut it was a yeah. straight legal oh, he kick was tired and, he was tired. and he uh he was milking it he was able to convince the ref that it was a nut kick so yeah he was he tired gave it to him but <laughs> then he got hit with that illegal knee that cost uh um Bogotov two points. That was really weird. I didn't, he went straight to a two point. He went deduction. straight to a two point. You know, I think it was because of how, how blatant brutal it was. It was. It, was, yeah, it, know, was it wasn't like he was on his way up or anything. He was flat out just down and he hit him. And yeah. maybe that was the reasoning for it. Yeah. But uh, so that one we both got a win on that one. wasn't a perfect pick, but I'm now on two and zero. Oh, finally, you know, hey, there two we and go. three at this point. I'm I'm uh what four and two at this point. Is that what it is? Four and one. I think something four like that. and one. Yeah, so I'm four and one at this point. We go into Maquan um, Amir Khani versus Danny Henry. Yeah. Um, I thought that Danny Henry was gonna submit him. I thought Danny Henry was gonna come out and tear him up. I was completely wrong. About <laughs> Way that. off on that one. See, I didn't. I didn't think either one of these guys were gonna tear each other up. I thought for sure that both of these guys are decorated grapplers, and that we were gonna see a really, really fun grappling match. Um, really, I had uh, Amir Khani by decision. But he came out and he just choked him out real quick. There you go. That puts you at uh. So now I'm, I'm even. I'm at three and three, three on three. the night. I'm at four and two on the night. So, but that one was fun to watch, you know. Yeah, it was. So then we move on to Muslim Salikov versus uh, uh, Elazio Zaleski Dos Santos. Mm -hmm. So um, this was a pretty exciting fight too. I like I liked this fight mm -hmm. a lot. I thought that Salikov was going to knock him out in the third round. Mm -hmm. Um. Either of these guys could have really gotten knocked out at any point. Yeah, fight of the you night know, candidate right they, here. They, uh, I was super excited about it. I was looking at the stats at the end of the fight, and it said something like the the, the, the punch count looked really low. But it did. The significant strike count was really yeah, low. Yeah, but I just didn't feel like that. that's what I was watching. I thought that I was seeing a lot more high-volume fight. Maybe it just was exciting in my head because I wanted it to be exciting. Yeah. Or they were more active in my mind. I don't know, but... It looked like a good fight to me. It looked like it was a high action fight. They were both landing good punches. It was, it, it was. It was back and forth the whole fight. I was really surprised that nobody went to sleep because they were <laughs> landing some hard shots yeah. that would usually knock out lesser men. Oh, yeah. So let's move on mm -hmm. to the next one. But we both got a win on that one. Hey, we did. So, so. so not a perfect for me, uh, <laughs> but we got the win. 
I'm now over 500. So yeah, you want to talk about... Oh, sorry. Do you want to talk about the next one real quick? Yeah, man. So this one was fun because uh, our pick'em video for this fight here, Vulcan Uzdemir this was the most popular one. versus Yuri Prohaska. Um, that one blew up, dude. We were almost 800 video, uh, 800 views on that video last time I checked. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. You know, for for a new channel, like our views exciting. aren't we're... even really hitting like a hundred on most of our videos. Yeah, and then so to have one hit 800. Yeah, that was pretty. That yeah, was I pretty think, awesome. I think what happened is Proska has a, a huge fan base and a lot of people yeah, that, that were looking for him, man. Because a yeah, lot of our does. search or a lot of our views came from search results on YouTube, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, we both really liked this guy too. From what we saw in our when we broke down the fight, we we both picked him to win by knockout. Yeah, we definitely did. We both. Um, I picked him to win by first round. I think you had him by first yep. round as well. No, I had him by second round. You had you had yeah. him by second round, so yep. you had a perfect pick on. Yeah, this I one? got a perfect pick on no that shit. one with the knockout. Dude. So that's a perfect pick for uh, me right there with the round two knockout. Thanks to Prohaska. Yeah, that was awesome. So I got I got a win, but not a perfect pick. So that was the that was the last fight on the undercard. And uh, let's see where that puts us all as a group. Yeah, I mean, I moved up to five and three on the uh, the night. The group overall is looking like they're picking really well. I mean, everybody's got at least five except for a couple people. Yeah, so let's see. So in first place right now for our group, it's Twin Turbski. Um, he's right now, he's got 495 points. He's looking like it says he's got eight correct out of 13. Yeah, he's he's so got, he's doing really good. He's got one perfect, three semi perfect. He's got them all right if he's got eight picks. Yeah, I know. That's why I was just like, <laughs> are you kidding me? 